Well, I'm going to go straight to the main story of the day, which is, of course, uh, the government's approval for a high-speed rail line between Birmingham and London. That's the first phase of uh, this uh, HS2, as it's being called, and I have two people with me um, who've got different views on it. The rail journalist, Christian Wilmer, who's with us, and uh, uh, the record producer, rail enthusiast, uh, Pete Waterman. Good to see you both, gentlemen. Thank you both for, for coming in. Um, well, Pete, how much of an enthusiast are you? Enough to know that... I will never see the end of this project, and I only wish I could. I mean, this is the biggest infrastructure program since 1832. Uh, I never thought I'd see it in my lifetime, and I've seen railways do exactly what I always knew they could do. And, and this is a big, brave decision with lots of problems, but at the end of the day, this is a brave decision. Uh, before I come to Christian, let me, let me put a slightly provocative take on it to you and see what you, th you think. We had a guest on earlier saying this is £32 billion to save 20 minutes for business people on a posh train up to Birmingham. Is that a good investment? No, it's, that's not even close to the argument. The railway is at a capacity. You know, we built the railway in 1835. We haven't improved it really. We, you know, we've upgraded the West Coast, but we really haven't put in a new line. In 1958, we built the M1. We started motorways. We never did the same with railways. We've got an infrastructure that goes back. It cannot take the strain. Literally, the old Jimmy Savile, let the train take the strain. Well, it won't anymore. We're at capacity. Christian? Well, I think this is uh, one of those grand projets, you know, that they do in France, and uh, politicians here like the idea of it because, you know, it's a big idea. But actually, there's so much... It works so in much... France, of course. Well, it does not it doesn't. You know, if you've ever travelled on the classic lines in France, they're not great. I mean, the TGV is wonderful, but the rest of the network has I've, been well, starved. I think it'd be lots of viewers thinking, what is he <laughs> talking about? <laughs> it sounds like British France, and yes. without the ice Anyway, yes. the point. But, no, yeah. the point is that uh, this will do precisely the same thing. It will absorb all the rail investment money for a long period. You know, the building of this line will take between about 2016 and 2033. And every one of those years will cost a, a billion, billion and a half of investment. And governments in those days are going to say, well, we're spending all this money on the railways. We're not going to bother with the rest. So what about people in Brighton? What about people in Bristol? What about people in Norwich? They won't get any benefits from this and they will have investment for their railways starved as a result. What is the answer? Simply to upgrade what's there? I, I think there's, there's a, the, the, the documents published today actually look at the alternatives and find that there are alternatives which are cheaper and which actually have a better benefit cost ratio, which is the, the methodology that the government uses. It looks at the benefits, it looks at the costs, and actually some of these alternatives are both cheaper and deliver more value for money. Come on, Pete, let's have an answer. They obviously don't travel on these trains. I do four days a week from Warrington or from Crewe. These trains are full. To put actually extra coaches on, they're still going to be doing full, but it will take five years. I've just watched us spend £6 billion putting two more rails in on the West Coast. Fantastic what it's done for us. It's given us a faster service. But that's now at capacity. You know, when are we going to realise in Britain, at one point you have to say, enough's enough, we have to start again. You know, we, we muddle through, we're great muddlers, but we can't model anymore because the next generation of people in this country need to move forward. They need a different system. Uh, but the point is, Christian, just the, just the point in terms of future generations, you know, because as Pete's saying, it's a long-term project. Uh, we're, we're looking at today's austerity climate and make, maybe making a judgment in this climate. It'll look very different in 14 years' time when people might turn around and say, thank goodness they make the decision then. Yeah, but this is based on the idea that everybody's going to travel around more and more and more and that the demand for travel is going to do, continue do to will? increase. And it won't necessarily increase. No, I mean, we've got well, you know, all sorts of technology. Cars, it's very expensive to put we, petrol on the car. And car, and is, car travel we, is got, going down. Th this project is actually not designed to take anything off the motorways. It will take 1% of cars off the motorways at most. So it's not designed to do that. And in a way, it will stimulate yet more travel. And we're looking at a world where resources are limited. This is not a green project. It was put forward initially as a green project. And they say, oh, this will get people out of planes and stuff. Then they looked at it and found that actually uh, the carbon dioxide emitted from this project will be about the same as, as current. It will not reduce uh, carbon, which is Christian, another you, key point. Christian, I'm a bit confused here. Um, because you say you don't want people travelling around. That's what our children do. They want to travel around. You know, 
There's this belief that everybody does everything on the internet. Well, they don't. My daughters quite regularly jump on the train to go and see their friends. The trains are full. They're, they're not know, actually full, Pete. Well, you know, the idea, the idea that trains... They are, they're my no, trains, and well, we're complaining we've not uh, got enough coaches. No, so some, so some, people are going somewhere. Yeah. Some, some trains are, are full, but that's partly because of the, the ticketing arrangement. So if you leave Euston at 7 o'clock on a Friday night, the train is full, but that's because the trains before are much more expensive. There's actually full of capacity. I mean, the, the first class... Well, on, on the, wait a minute, the first class on the Pendolinos, for example, is virtually always empty because nobody can afford it. You could transform a lot of those first-class trains into standard-class. Well, some standard of us can class. afford it. <laughs> so, well, <laughs> lucky, lucky you, yes. Pete. Well, hang on. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 okay, no, no. Look, the 330 Glasgow, Virgin train, the, the, that 330, 430, 530, every day, particularly on a Friday, is full. Right. I mean, that, 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 That's that point is made. I want a sentence from each of you. Just a sentence, just to give me a sense of where you think this is going to be in the next couple of years. Are we going to be bogged down in a big debate about it before anything actually happens? Well, I think it's going to get into a lot of controversy, not least because there are a lot of Tory MPs who don't like it. OK, one thought, please. Tragic if it did, because this only, doesn't only bring trouble, it brings jobs, because for the first time we could probably bring back making trains. We've seen what the Japanese have done with the car industry here. It's a fantastic success story. By building the trains, who knows? We might have a railway industry back in this country. We could That'd go be good on news. I could go on for another hour. It's great to have you both, Christian, Pete. Good to talk to you. Thank you very much Thank indeed. You. Thank you.